We are back and the 6.5 is on the virtual road at Microsoft Build. It has been an amazing, amazing event. I mean, there's stuff happening all over Microsoft, Daniel. I mean, on the left, right, we, we have Windows, we have devices. On the right, we have Azure and all things cloud. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's been a great uh, day and a half or so, so far, Pat. You know, we knew this would be a big inflection point. You've been on stage more than a few times talking about the future of the AI PC. And, you know, we're having a moment here, but it's also a massive moment in the data center, in the cloud. Enterprises are driving their strategies forward around AI and trying to build on top of what they have trying to keep things private, keep things safe, keep things connected, but also taking advantage of all of these exciting generative tools. The ones that we're seeing in our everyday consumer lives are also, Pat, going to be driving into our business lives. So it's a great event. I couldn't be more excited. And of course, Pat, it's always great when we're on the road and we have a chance to talk to uh, some of the executives as well. Well, how about this virtual on the road? No, it's great. So let's bring in uh, Eric and Asha from Azure and focused in on the AI platform. Welcome to the 6.5, Asha, Eric. Thanks for having us. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, it's amazing we've gone this long and uh, haven't uh, haven't talked to y'all yet. It's like the last 18 months for us analysts is, have been pretty much AI non-stop. But uh, again, thanks for coming on the show. It's been pretty slow on our end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, like feature every 90 days. It's, yeah. it's it's great. Well, Pat and I are pretty much like a, a professional event attender, so we can see it on the faces of the vendors when they've kind of got there's the different stages, the beginning of the event, the encouragement, the excitement, the fear. How is everything going to be responded to? Are we going to hit the note? And then you can see by like the third day as you're winding down, boosts are starting to come down and you actually can see people's shoulders relaxing a little mm -hmm. bit. And it's, it's not because you're happy the event's over. You're just like, for the first time, you're like decompressing. Like the balloon is just the air is like, oh, and you're going to like, finally, I sleep a little bit tonight. But uh, listen, it's been a wonderful uh, couple of days. Very exciting. You know, Eric, I'd love to kick off the, the Q&A here with you and talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the ways here at Build that you guys have discussed helping customers build with AI um, and what, talk a little bit as you're, you know, with these new things you're offering, what kind of momentum are you seeing? Yeah. I mean, there's been so much going on it, with our customers and, and maybe it's easiest to let them tell our story, right? I mean, we worked with uh, Mercedes Benz, right? And so Mercedes Benz is integrating GPT-4 directly into their car, the, the MBUX voice assistant. And so now you can just talk naturally to your car uh, as opposed to, you know, everyone's used those you know, voice assistants in the car that just don't actually do anything. By bringing that power with it, you can get a much richer experience, um, but they're not stopping there, right? They're using GPT-4 Turbo with vision uh, on their dash cam so they can understand what's the environment and what are the things that are going on for the drivers as they're, you know, drive in their cars and, and provide additional context for the speech assistant. Things like understanding the signs that they're seeing, the re finding parking spots or things like that. So really interesting use cases. And so, you know, that's sort of a, a car consumer end all the way to the other end where we're working with developers. Like we work with Unity, who is, you know, it's a leading platform for game developers to, to build and develop games. Uh, and they're, you know, building a bot directly integrated. They call it Muse Chat, where now you can see their documentation and help users and developers really create the perfect video game sort of exactly in that environment. And so, you know, those types of stories we're seeing over and over across all the 53,000 organizations that we have using Azure AI. And so, you know, with customers really just coming in and driving all of these things, we're having to move really quickly as well and just continually bring out new functionality for our customers. And so, you know, most of the things that our customers come to us to try and do uh, is retrieval augmented generation. How can they get their data into these models? And the way that you do that most effectively is you need some sort of search engine, a vector search engine. And so Azure AI Search, uh, we just announced its mega storage uh, enhancement, which you know in this update, we really decreased the cost of it while increasing the storage capacity and vector index size. Um, and so that makes it really cost of effective for customers. And so really interesting to see how all these things come together. Um, you know, we GP, GA GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. Um, and so you can sort of see all the things you can do with that. And then, of course, 
you know, you saw GPT 4.0, the new flagship model from OpenAI, which is now in preview on Azure. And so super fast, super efficient and fully multimodal, all these things coming together. It's really exciting to see just the momentum we're building with our customers. Yeah, and I love those two examples. And not not that they're the bookends, but on one on one hand, you know, on the one side you have people making their own users who can make their own games, along with developers. And my gosh, how long have we been talking uh, about backup capability? Probably for about a decade, and we're getting closer and closer here. Super exciting. And then on the Yoda automotive side, and uh, by the way, you, you also hit uh, you know a, a big keyword uh, uh, highlights here. Uh, rag, right? Rag is everywhere. Dan and I can't go to a conference where we're not uh, talking about that that capability and and the added precision it gets to um, to get to the to the result that a lot of companies and consumers, by the way, uh, are looking for. So, Asha, I have to ask you, what are the building blocks that um, you brought out here uh, at the show? that helped them build with AI, maybe that helped Unity, maybe that helped uh, companies like uh, uh, Mercedes? Yeah, you probably heard uh, the co-pilot stack mentioned several times already throughout the last day and a half. And yeah. one thing is, is Eric and I get to, to build that uh, with Azure AI. Um, and we made several announcements across almost every single layer of the stack. So for example, on the model side, Eric was talking about GPT-4V, but also GPT-4 Omni. In addition to that, um, we made several announcements around expanding the Phi family and introducing new models. So big time Gen 1 from uh, Nexla, Cohere Rerank, uh, Core 4 2 Jace. And so, you know, we've been doing a lot to think about how do we help people find the right model for the right job at the right pro price and quality curve. And so that was a big set of, of announcements we made. We also continue to lean into safety and responsibility, especially with, you know, technology as it continues to advance. So does our responsible AI. We've been the leader in the space for the last eight years, and that's not going to slow down. And so we now have, uh, you know, 90 plus features, 20 tools available, and we announced several new, new features. One of my favorite is the introduction of custom categories. So users can now create custom filters, uh, for their content moderation needs. We we talked a lot about groundedness detection as well, prompt shields um, and new partnerships. And of course, all of this is available in Azure AI Studio, which has been a labor of love for us um, <laughs> as we are building uh, now GA, uh, a tool chain to really help developers uh, build, manage and deploy these applications in, in one place. Love it. Yeah, you've seen a lot of momentum. Of course, you know, you hear a lot about kind of the cool new gizmo, which is Copilot. And everybody's talking about obviously GitHub Copilot and how it's kind of all the rage. It's gotten a huge wins. The, the use has exploded. But you guys are really building that stack for developers from top to bottom. That's like, yes, we of course have the, you know, the low and no code and then the Copilots, but then also the tools for those very sophisticated developers to continue to build the most robust and in comprehensive applications. And, and I think that's a big thing that's important coming out of this because that community really is sort of the, it's, it's the underpinnings. And you know, while we are making it easier and there's some debate on how developers will, will evolve, let's just call it that, they're gonna be critical in this next wave. And I think Microsoft has been really, really consistent in their de desire to make sure that audience doesn't feel ignored and they actually feel very embraced for the importance of, of the role they're gonna play. You know, Eric, another thing that's been making a huge uh, splash in the five is in the in the Microsoft community is the five it's five three five. I don't know how many times I have to say that it's <laughs> five three. Can That's you right. talk a little bit about uh, what five three is and the significance uh, in the AI landscape? And I'm going to try to say that six times quickly. Five three five, five, three, three, five, five three five three five three exactly. Um, you know, it's been really exciting in the last month to to release five three and get the, the customer feedback on it. Um, really, it represents you know some new innovation in the way that you can train a model to get really high performance at a really small size. Um, right. you know, we thought through very carefully, sort of almost giving it a curriculum like you would give to a child to sort of teach you know all of the things that it needs to know. And so, uh, when when taking that approach, we're really getting tremendous performance. Really, the five three models tend to punch a full weight class above their size, and so. What we've done is we've released, you know, 5.3 uh, 
um, you know, mini, small, and medium. And so now we have all three of those available um, in addition to Phi 3 for vision. And uh, so you get the high performance. Um, they're also directly integrated into Azure AI. And so you can just directly call them um, and they're open source. And so or Phi 3 Mini is open source. So you can use it exactly the way that you need to. And so, uh, but they also, they were built really responsibly as well. Like we went through the same safety measures and the same evaluation techniques that we go through uh, all of our models. And so you can know that when you're using something from Microsoft, you're really getting secure, it's going to be something that will be safe and on your brand's message. And so that should give customers a lot of confidence that they can work at it. And so, you know, to bring all these capabilities, and I think Phi 3 for Vision is going to be really interesting, bringing vision into a much smaller form factor. Um, you know, it's going to be exciting to see the yeah. types of applications customers are going to go and build with that. Yeah, it is funny uh, how everybody was just you know, large language models, right? That's that's all there is. And then kind of looking at uh, the the pros and cons of that and a lot of discussion. I call them SLIMs. Some people call them SLMs, uh, whatever. Uh, I, and it's cool that the smaller the model, the smaller the resources to take advantage of that. And that's a really good thing when it comes to, to uh, inference and infrastructure right. uh, a cost uh, as well. And a lot of the clients that I've talked to, particularly when they're working on uh, very narrow types of answers that they want in, in the healthcare community, uh, in legal community, uh, being able to narrow in uh, on a certain set, they don't need a, a 70 billion uh, a parameter model. Um, the other thing that's, that seems to have taken off uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's not new, is this this idea, idea of uh, multi-modality, uh, which is, you know, large language models. We have videos, we have images, we have uh, voice in addition uh, to, to the text. Uh, can you talk uh, a little bit about how this has evolved over uh, the past years and what might the impact be to different uh, industries as we move forward, right? We've seen a lot of consumer goodness, which is great. And I know Azure serves uh, companies that serve consumers, but what does it mean for certain industries that you're, that you're piecing together here? Yeah, it's been uh, really interesting to see like just how quickly this space has moved. I mean, certainly everything in AI has moved quickly, but as we thought about like multimodal models and bringing vision and text together, like it was just a few months ago, I was saying, I think that's going to really be big. And now you see what you can actually do with GPT-4.0 and how seamless improving the performance and, and improving the accuracy, um, it starts to improve just the fluency and the types of things that you can do as you're interacting with and talking to this model. And so just thinking about like, all right, well, what are the types of applications or things you could build with it? Um, you know, the obvious answers, right? Like customer service and things like that. We've already seen customer service get supported a lot by bringing these text models and, and bringing them in. But now you can bring in different data diverse data inputs and, and lots of different ways of engaging with the customer that, that really feels natural in a way that it hasn't in the past. I think other areas like analytics is going to be super interesting. Now having models that can really use vision to understand trends and charts and images and things yeah. that they haven't in a, in a totally new and different way. Um, you know, the content use cases, right? These models have always been great at generating text, uh, you know, and, and sort of helping helping me write my document and things like that. Uh, but now being able to create images and, and understand the images, you know, hey, here's my PowerPoint deck, go and look at what I've done and now give me some ideas of how I can make it better. Um, you know, we do that today with PowerPoint Designer, but just think of how much richer the capabilities that we're bringing are going to be as we pull all this together. And so it's really pretty exciting that j just how quickly all of that new multimodal capabilities have come together and the impact that they're going to have on so many industries. Yeah. And it's not even just the getting that one mode right. It's the mixture of, uh, of these modes that I, I think we're finding out is not easy. Yeah. It's not easy to do from a latency standpoint, from an accuracy standpoint, you know, which modality gets gets the higher weighting, 
but that's why we have people like you and Asha to, to figure this stuff out. It's, it's, it's hard. Do our best. Yes. It's, it's moving quickly and it's really pretty, pretty exciting to see what customers will yeah. do. With it. Yeah. Well, if these weren't hard problems though, Pat, we wouldn't have a lot of work. So, you know, we need hard problems and we need people to solve hard problems. And, you know, it's been a really fun conversation to kind of cover the gambit of, of what's going on. Of course, AI leads the way. I don't even think right now it's possible to have a technology conversation and not zero in on quite a bit of AI, generative AI. Do we sell, is anything in tech sold that's not AI now, Dan? I mean, um, I'm sure there is, but yeah. I just haven't heard of it anymore. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. I'll dig deep. I'll dig deep and think of something, but it's either AI itself, it's driven by AI, it's fun, it's foundational too, it's sensing technologies, it's developers for a, you know, on and on and on we go, but I love the conversation multimodal, of course, you know, what we've seen in the last uh, several weeks, you know, the, the, the launch of 4.0 and some of the things that are going on there and just seeing, you know, this, the, the ability for us to have much more human interactions with many different modal modes at the same time is super exciting. It's also you know, I always say it's a little scary, but, you know, I think we're all getting over that and we're learning it and we're seeing it. And we're just blown away by how it's going to be able to change our lives. But I'm actually going to ask Asha a question that's not specifically going to say AI in the question. I'm not going to, it's not going to actually say it. I want to talk about cloud native for a minute. This is something we spend a lot of time on. Um, cloud native development is, is hot. You know, what are the updates you're going to bring from build or what were the updates that you had come from build that you think are driving to make cloud native uh, development faster and easier? Yeah, I mean, it does go to the point that you talked about, though, with uh, AI feeling like it's part of every application at this point. It feels like increasingly applications are are broken or feel broken without it. And, and it also feels like every developer is starting to work with AI, which is different than what it was even a year ago, where it was more experimentation. And so now as we're starting to think about how do we get this to scale, um, and we look around, Microsoft has the best IDEs, the most loved IDEs. And so we're spending a lot of time thinking about, okay, how do we make our tools accessible inside of those? And so um, we've been working on rolling out a number of announcements. So uh, we announced the preview of GitHub Copilot for Azure. So that's you know, the ability to just interact with your Azure services from wherever you're comfortable, VS Studio, VS Code, even GitHub. Um, and so that's going to be a huge step forward. We also announced AI Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So think about this as just an extension that provides tools and models for developers to start to acquire and run models, fine tune them locally, deploy them to Azure Studio, all from VS Code. And so, you know, as much as possible, we want to meet developers where they are. We think that's tapping into how they're already building their application, providing, you know, more tools to make that accessible. And so we're, we're doing that a lot, we're, a lot more. We're going to see a lot of advancements in how we're even bringing safety and security to that as well, but we're pretty excited about it. Well, listen, I, I, you went, you went a little quicker than I expected, Asha. Uh, I was, uh, I was waiting for the, for the rest, but you know what? It, there's so much to digest. I thought that build was, you know, an absolute momentum builder for you guys. And while Pat and I tend to look at pan Microsoft often, I think the work you guys are doing to bring the developer community forward is going to be so critical. And of course, building on Azure, uh, you know, we've given credit over and over again, Patrick and I, that Microsoft saw the opportunity, the AI inflection, and has completely reinvigorated and really become, you know, the the company to watch and the company that is leading yeah. in the AI space. And, you know, congratulations on that. You know, we all know that there's an inflection so many times and the, you know, the rates between inflections get shorter and shorter. And at each one, there's an opportunity to rise. And so Microsoft came out quickly, has been very definitive and very decisive. Very interesting what you're doing with Phi 3. You know, we've talked a lot about the big yeah. models and everybody's super focused, but we all know we can get really high fidelity with these small models and that creates so much excitement for what we can do on device and even just power, even just lowering the amount of power that needs to be used because we all know what a massive problem that is gonna be that unfortunately no one on this call is gonna solve, no one on this video is gonna solve, but that does need to be solved. So, you know, I wanna say thank you both it's uh, been wonderful to have you. Congratulations on all the announcements at Build. I'd love to have you back on the 6.5 soon, uh, if you're willing. 
Yeah, thanks for having us. It's always great to talk to you guys. And uh, you're totally right. So many exciting things happening across all the things that we're doing. And uh, we just love to share with our customers and, and people who want to figure out, like, it's just so exciting to see the things that our customers go build, right? Yeah. Things that we just, you could kind of dream might be possible, but we're just putting the tools out there and people do incredible things with them. Well, you didn't call it build for nothing. So Eric, <laughs> Asha, wonderful having you. We'll do it again soon. Thanks for joining. And thank you everybody out there for tuning into the 6.5. We're virtually, as Pat likes to say, on the road. And we appreciate you tuning in, subscribing, and staying with the 6.5 for all of our great episodes. This one being the best one you've watched today. Take care. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye now.